Hey writers, I'm really excited about this collab video because I'm teaming up with eight other awesome authors who are all bringing you our top 12 Christmas themed writing tips, which we're calling the 12 writing tips of Christmas. Below I've listed all the author tubers involved so you can check out everybody's videos, but we also wanted to make this even more special by turning this into a giveaway with a bunch of awesome writerly goodies. So make sure to watch to the end of this video to find out all the details about that. Special thanks to Melissa Hope who put this whole collab together and let's get into the tips. Basically, we all came up with a bunch of Christmas themed questions to help us share our tips. And the first one is from Jenna Street. Her theme was Christmas sweets. And her question was like Christmas sweets, what are the most helpful comments to give writers when you're beta reading for them? As a writer, it is crucial to have beta readers read your book and give you feedback before you publish it. So you can find all the plot holes and all the mistakes and make it that much better. But if you're on the other end and you're beta reading for someone else's book, I think that the most helpful comments I've gotten from other beta readers are ones that have a mix of both positive comments and critical comments. If we don't know what we're doing right and we just get a ton of critical comments, we run the risk of possibly deleting things that actually are good but we just didn't know we're good or getting so discouraged that we just scrap the whole project. But if beta readers are only saying positive things, then we really don't know how to improve our book. Overall, I think the most crucial thing is whether you're giving positive or critical comments, it's to then say why. It's not enough to just say, I liked this or I didn't like this. But if you include why you feel like that, then the author can better take those comments and know how to improve with your specific feedback. If you wanna learn more about beta readers and how to run rounds of beta readers for your own book, I actually did a whole video series on this topic, which I'll link below and in the cards for you. The second question comes from Holly Davis and her theme was Frosty the Snowman. And her question was, who Who's the most unique or interesting character you've ever created? And what trait does a character need to connect with a reader? First on my book on Wings of Ash and Dust, which I am getting into the publishing stages soon, I have one main character and four very important supporting characters, all of which are adolescent fairies that are competing, representing their clan for the fairy crown. I love them all so much, but I think if I just had to pick one that's probably the most unique, I would probably have to pick Hickory. He's a really quirky and fun fairy who actually lost sight in one of his eyes and is steadily losing his sight in the other eye. This is a real problem for him because what he loves more than anything is painting and drawing. So though he has has a really positive outlook. It's really heartbreaking to watch him go through this. And since his clan mostly lives underground, he has this fear of the dark, which is unusual for his clan. And anytime he is in the dark, he's just afraid that he's finally lost all sight in his other eye and he'll never be able to paint or draw again. As far as what trait is needed in order to help your readers connect to your characters, I think one thing that is super helpful is making sure that your character is relatable to your target audience in some way. Even if all my readers aren't technically afraid of the dark everyone is afraid of something. And I could definitely see this when I did my beta reader rounds because a lot of my beta readers really loved Hickory and I think it's because they really connected to this idea of having this fear that can just be paralyzing and stand in the way of something you really love. If you wanna learn more about my story, I have a whole playlist of videos all about it below. And you can always sign up for my newsletter or check out my website to get all the latest developments as I move towards publishing. Question number three was from Mari Suggs and her theme was Christmas tree. She asked, so what about writing lights you up the most and how do you keep this enthusiasm when things turn hard? One of the things that really lights me up is figuring out how the larger plot coincides with my character's arc, meaning what they're learning or how they're growing. And I love when these two things sort of collide and work together in a really powerful way to communicate some kind of message. I also really love writing plot twists. One of the best feelings was when my beta readers would comment and say, oh my gosh, I didn't see this coming, but I love it. And I love that too. It just made me so happy. When I'm running low on creative juice, I think the two things that really help me is one, to talk to somebody about my story, and that's usually my awesome critique partners or my husband, and they allow me to bounce ideas off them and give me feedback and give me their ideas. Or sometimes I just need to step away and do something fun like read or something else creative that isn't writing. Just gets my creative juices flowing in a different way that sometimes inspires me to then come back afresh 
after my brain has processed differently and gotten some perspective. Question four comes from Katie Wilson and her theme was the Nutcracker. She asked, how do you create characters or items that come to life on the page? What tips do you have for describing them so readers can visualize and feel them? One thing I really love using to build my characters and make them more believable and more real is to spend time actually plotting them out in my series Bible or my story Bible. This is where everything is housed that I need to write my story, including outlines and in-depth character bios. And in those bios, I like to include not just like a list of characteristics, but I also really enjoy taking a little bit of space to just write in their voice, even if the story is in third person or they're not the main character, just writing a little bit as if it's a journal entry or writing a scene from their perspective really helps me discover their voice and more of who they are. Another thing I really love to do is creating Pinterest boards for my story. Even though I'm a writer, I'm definitely a very visual person. And so collecting inspirational pictures or even celebrity pictures of like a dream cast for my characters really helps me visualize them. And every picture has a story. So I feel like it speaks to me and gives me more fuel for when I'm writing my characters. One thing I also wanna invest in soon is the Emotion Thesaurus book series. I've heard a lot of really great things about it. And something that I really want to grow in is just describing characters, not only how they look, but their emotions more deeply and not telling, but showing. And that's what I hear that these books do really well. And for me, I think especially when I'm writing the first draft, I just write the same kind of descriptions over and over. But these are supposed to be like catalogs of a bunch of different options that you can use to describe similar things, but in different ways. Number five was my question and my theme I was given was the nativity. So I asked, who are the people you could not be on this writing journey without? those that have come around you to support and celebrate your writing? And what are your best tips for finding a support system for those that feel alone? Many of you guys know how much I love the writing community. And a big reason is because I really wasn't making a lot of headway in my writing journey and career until I found an awesome group of writers online. I actually shared a pretty detailed video around this time last year, where I told the story of how I became a full-time writer in a year and how I found my support system. So if you're interested in getting even more details that will be linked below. But just to thank a few people that have just been such a rock for me, I obviously need to thank my husband, Ben, who without his support, I would not be on this journey. I need to thank my critique partners, Bethany Atazada and Bruna Reese, who are just awesome cheerleaders and always pushing me to make my story even better. I also have a writer's mastermind group that I meet with every week. And those girls are Alicia Grumley, Savannah J. Goins, and Holly Davis. And all together, we call Call ourselves the fifth brain because we are always giving each other new ideas for not just writing but also writing business. I obviously need to thank my patrons who support me generously every month so I can continue doing what I'm doing. And if you guys didn't know already, you guys seriously encourage me just as much as I encourage you. And oh my gosh, this whole video could just be names upon names of people that are just amazing. Like the ladies from the Wander Writers Retreat, all the friends that I've made through Instagram and YouTube. But for sake of time, if you're watching this and we are at all friends, just know that I love you and appreciate you so much. And you are definitely considered a part of my support circle. And I couldn't do this without you. If you're feeling alone in your writing journey and don't have a lot of friends yet, I have a few videos that I'm going to link down below where I give some of my top tips, but I'll just put one of them in here right now, which would definitely be to pick one platform, whether it's here on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and search hashtags and groups and different things that have to do with writers. And even though it's scary, just put yourself out there. Even if you're shy, and believe me, I really am. I'm definitely an introvert. But if you get a little bit outside of yourself and take the opportunity to comment and encourage other writers, focusing on them because that's always easier than focusing on ourselves, you will make friends in no time. Again, I have a bunch of other tips in other videos, but let's move on to the next question. Question number six is from Angela Ann and her theme was Christmas movies and she picked Love Actually. She asked, who is your favorite couple you've ever written? And how would they spend the holidays? I love that. Also, what do you like to see happen with couples in fiction in general? Right now, besides Ash and Dust, I have one other book that I am working on for NaNoWriMo. And I really don't wanna to give too much away for either project, but I will say that for Ash and Dust, my main character is a pixie pirate. And so her and her love interest, who I will remain nameless, would probably spend some of their holidays sailing on the sea and then end up in the mountains and fly to the snow caps and hold up in a 
lodge somewhere as it snows. In other people's stories, I really love when two love interests start out as enemies, so the enemies to lovers trope, or at least seeing the couple having to overcome some kind of obstacle in order to realize their feelings and finally be together. Don't make it too easy. Throw some conflict in there. It makes it more fun. Question number seven is from Mandy Lynn and her theme was Christmas food. She asks, what's your favorite Christmas snack to help fuel your writing? All right, this one is probably gonna make me hungry, but I would probably pick freshly baked chocolate chip cookies and not milk, but chocolate milk. If you've never tried that and dipping that freshly made cookie into chocolate milk, oh my gosh, it is the best. And oh my gosh, I really want some like right now. <laughs> Question number eight is from Melissa Hope, the one who put this collab together and her theme was Christmas gifts. She asked, what gift of advice has helped or inspired you during your writing journey? And gosh, I could probably just go on and on with a bunch of different advice that has been super helpful. But most recently, I've just been repeating this mantra that my critique partner, Bethany Atazada has given me, which is messy action is better than no action. It sort of goes along with that common phrase, you can't edit a blank page. But for some reason, this specific mantra has just been giving me the freedom to just make things messy, especially at the beginning. And I'm obviously not saying to publish something messy. That should be a polished, finished product that you are super proud of. But getting from ground zero with like your first draft all the way to that published book takes time. And if you're expecting that first or even second or third draft to be the perfect book, you're never going to get through it because you're just gonna keep getting frustrated. So especially for this past NaNoWriMo, I've just been saying, okay, Okay, messy action is better than no action. Now that I think about it, I think Bethany was actually using that phrase as more for your author platform. So definitely for that, you can apply it there too. But definitely for my writing, I've been using it to just get this first draft of this new book done. And it's been really helping me get words out faster so I can then evaluate them and improve them and get feedback and eventually get to that polished product. But I just have to have the mindset that it's not gonna happen overnight and it's better to act and have it not be super great at first than it is to not write at all. Going along with this, I also wanted to shout out my writer's mastermind group because all the time we are saying the mantra of fail faster. Statistically, what we hear from all great success stories is that you have to go through a lot of failure and rejection before you can get to what you would call success. Failure is not the enemy. It's the only way you learn. It's the only way you get better. It's the only way you grow. And in the end, it's not really failure as long as you learn from it and keep going forward. So why not make the goal and trick your brain into saying, okay, I'm going to fail faster. I'm going to get through all that statistical, probable failure and rejection so I can get to that finished product instead of just sitting here, feeling paralyzed, not learning anything and never getting anywhere. Question nine is from Natalia Lee and her theme was the three wise men. She asked, what started your journey to writing? Did it turn out the way you expected? And what advice would you give your past self about your journey? Again, if you guys wanna really hear my full story, you can check out that how I became a full-time writer in a year video. But in short, I've always loved writing, but it's always been more of a hobby. Getting a book written and published was more of a bucket list item. And a few years ago, I was sort of going through a bit of a career identity crisis and writing was really that other creative outlet that I got so much joy from. And after my friend Bethany got me locked into the writing community and I had all these people who were just supporting me and encouraging me and I was learning so much, I was like, I can really do this and I was hooked. Has it turned out the way I expected? In a lot of ways, it has exceeded my expectations, especially in the realm of finding writing friends and building my author platform, even before my books are published. I think in some ways, I hoped that I would be able to get published faster, and it really hasn't been that long. It's been about two years that I've been seriously at this, but I have to look at the progress and say I've written multiple drafts. Even in the last year, I've done beta readers, I submitted to pitch wars, and now I'm at the point that with a little more editing, I would love to start querying or even start down the self-publishing track within the next year. It's just insane and I couldn't be more thankful, but if I had to give some advice to my past self, I would tell her, get involved even sooner. Don't worry about what people will think, just do it. Enjoy the journey and don't put so much stress on yourself and know that this is a long game. Try your best, learn as much as you can, grow as much as you can, write as much as you can, but know that you're investing in something long-term and it will be worth it. All right, we got three more questions and then I'm gonna tell you guys about the giveaway. So number 10 is Santa's bag. And the question is, if Santa could help you meet your author of choice, who would it be? 
and what would you like them to do? Okay, picking one author is just super hard, but in this case, I think I'm gonna have to be a little bit cliche and pick JK Rowling because I would just love to sit down to coffee with her and pick her brain about all her best tips for planning and writing a successful series, how she developed her own unique writing style and characters, and what are her best tips for weaving in world building without making it info dumpy. Oh, and magic systems. I just like really wanna grow in that area too. So yeah, that's another one. Question 11 is Santa's little helpers. What writing resource has been the most helpful to you? I always have a list of my favorite resources in the description of all my videos and on my website, but it's probably no surprise if you've been subscribed for a while that my favorite writing resource is Save the Cat Writes a Novel. If you're new to my channel, Bethany and I actually did a 10 week series where we use this book to plot a brand new story with our viewers live. So if you're interested in not just reading that book and gleaning from it what you will, but watching it actually played out in action, I will link that series below too. And question number 12 is Christmas schedule. How do you juggle writing with the busy holiday season? Gosh, if somebody figures this out, please tell me, I wanna know. But honestly, if I had to give my best piece of advice, I think really sitting down and making some sort of realistic plan for yourself is the best thing I can say. I explain a little bit of how I did this for the month of November for NaNoWriMo because I already knew that I was going to have about half the time. I actually have been attempting to write 50,000 words in 14 days because of trips and I knew I wouldn't have a lot of time on the weekends. As I'm recording this, I'm actually still in the middle of November, but I only have 18,000 words left to win. And I really think that I was able to make it this far because of the plan that I put together. And I actually did that with my patrons and we all came up with our own unique plans. But if you want to learn a little bit more of how I plan that, I will link those vlogs about that experience in the description below. And I'll also let you know if I actually made it because at the time of this recording, I don't know if I'm going to make it, but I hope I do. I'm also going to link a video where I just share how I plan my normal days and how I get writing and other things in. So I will link that below too. And now for the giveaway. How this will work is one lucky viewer of all of our videos will get a gift from each author tuber involved in this collab. So that's nine gifts in total. All of our prizes are listed in the description below, but just to give an example, one thing I do is create and teach authors how to build and use their author websites to grow their author platform and readership, even if they don't have any books published yet. So for my gift, I'm going to be giving away a free website consultation call, which is valued at $25, or the winner can choose to get $25 off my author website bootcamp course where I teach authors everything that I know. If this sounds exciting to you, this is how you enter. If you live in the US or Canada, all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to each of the author tubers that I've listed down below and comment on each video telling us your favorite movie or book that's either Christmas related or set in a snowy climate or winter setting. Remember, there are nine of us listed below. And if you're watching this in order, the next video you're gonna wanna watch is Katie Wilson's. Also keep in mind that this giveaway ends on December 15th at 5 p.m. Eastern standard time. So make sure to watch, subscribe, and comment on all of the videos before the window closes if you want to be considered. I hope you guys find all the tips we share really helpful. Good luck with the giveaway and we'll see you in the next video.